Hi everyone, today let's talk real quick about V-Ray for Houdini and more precisely the Sun and Sky setup. So let's dive in. For the demonstration, I'll be using this steering I made for a Patreon tutorial. You can always check out this link and maybe subscribe if you want to access some exclusive video tutorial. Anyway, let's have a look at V-Ray. So since we are in object context, let's create the sunlight now. V recent night, boom. I'm gonna apply a yellow color so that you can identify it pretty easily. So we got all these features, we're gonna go through them in a bit. Uh, in the meantime, let's set up the render. So I'm dropping a V-Ray renderer. So in there, you can actually specify whether you wanna use your CPU, your GPU or RTX GPU if you have one for your render. And I'm gonna leave it to CPU. In IPR, let's check use denoiser just to have a clean fast feedback and I'm gonna drop a V-Ray environment so in there we're gonna load or sky so in here is whether you want to use a picture for your background and stuff so I'm just gonna use a sky node so let's plug it and by default it's trying to automatically find the sun if you have several sun for some reason you can always pick up manually this uh, V-Ray light sun and overwrite sun setting if you need to. Well, in my case, I wanna rely on the sun only, so let's move on. In here, we need to specify the sky as an environment source. So let's make sure you have the V-Ray shelf and you can run the IPR from here. So it's creating the setup for us and we are ready to play with all lighting. So we're gonna head back into the object context and start playing with the V-Ray light sun. So how this light works is basically based on its rotation. So if you change its inclination, it's affecting how high is the sun. And in that case, the higher it is, the brighter it's gonna be. So one thing is by default, the intensity is way too high. So you might need to either decrease it, like around 0.1, or we could leave that to one and play with the exposure of the camera to deal with this light. So we're gonna try that. Let's select the camera and apply camera properties and physical camera. So you have this tab that's appearing and in physical camera, you have all these photographic parameters that you can use to drive your renders. So we're gonna try that. Let's relaunch the IPR. By default, the shutter speed value is 200. It actually means the camera is letting the light go through the aperture for one second divided by 200. So if we increase this value, the render is getting less exposure. So that sounds better in a case. So from here, we could start moving the sunlight and try different lighting conditions. Yep, so that seems about right. It's not too bright or too dark and there are more physical properties that you could use. Uh, there is a vignetting. Uh, you can enable it for fun. Um, it's like creating this vignette around the, the render. I wouldn't leave it for final render and would rather do that in COM, but why not? Also, we have some lens shift parameters. Sometimes can get some pretty interesting effects. Otherwise, uh, we have some distortion that you can enable. Uh, for wide angles like that, you would get a fair amount of distortion in real life. So I'm probably going to try something like that for now and let's keep working on the light. So back in the viewer light, we could also play with the horizontal offset angle to actually try to get a better orientation or height for this, for this guy. Yeah, I wanna see less ground. So something like that, maybe. There are more parameters we could play with, like ozone, which would affect the color of the sunlight. A higher value result in a bluish lighting, while lower values would get orange results. Let's set something in between for now. Also, turbidity, the help is telling us this will set the amount of dust in the air. So higher values will get a polluted orange look while lower values would get a clear sky. 
Now we also have the size, which is the size of the sun. So right now we are not seeing it. It's not in the frame. Let's move this light. So now it's pretty much in the frame. And let's try to increase the size. So something like around 10, 30. So one thing to consider is the bigger is the light, the more diffuse is going to be the lighting. If you I set it to 100, you see how it starts to get so diffused. I'm going to set something like around uh, 50 to, or 30. And uh, yeah, we could try to lower it, see how it look. So it's pretty fun to play with. Now there's one thing that's missing. That would be some atmospheric fog. That would make that so much better. So let's head back into the renderer setting. And in effect tab, we're going to go and head into aerial perspective. Let's grab the sun. And from here, let's decrease the distance. So it would, of course, depend on the scale of your scene. In my case, I need to decrease it quite a bit. And we could also start playing the filter color to add some kind of bluish, bluish color. Or maybe orange. Oh. So that's pretty fun to play with. Actually, let's adjust that. Oof. That's too much. My color is actually a bit too green, so I'm going to make it more blue and desaturated. Right. In scattered light, it's basically the opacity of this layer. So value of zero, you get nothing. <laughs> and two would uh, increase this effect. All right. Let's move on. Uh, heading back to my very sun and going to move its position, see how it's affecting this layer. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Actually, my distortion was like way too much. See how the sun was getting distorted. Probably should reduce that to something like that. All right. So that can be a pretty nice way to concept or establish the mood of a picture real quick. It really helps adding some depth and contrast into the picture. So uh, it's very fun to play with. So I'm going to try to make some changes real quick. Like probably try a higher value in here. And we haven't tried weather vapor. It's supposed to affect the amount of uh, vapored water in the sky. So I'm not changing much changes, maybe because we'd rely on another sky model. So I didn't talk about that. But yeah, there are different sky models that you can use. Uh, might need to do some adjustment after, but uh, yeah, you got a clear sky kind of thing. Let's see, that would be an overcast sky. Yeah, my favorite one is really the uh, OSEC model. I'm probably going to leave it this way. All right, that's pretty much it for today. Then the next step to make this look more interesting could be to add some cloud gobo in the sky to break up the lighting and get some more variation in some places. I actually showed that in another video using Mantra, but that would be really the same setup with V-Ray. So adding a link in description if you're interested. I hope this was useful. Trying here another format, way shorter, focusing on a couple of features. I will do more of this in the future with some special bonus for my patrons. You know the drill, leave a thumb up if you like this tutorial and maybe subscribe if you don't want to miss the next videos. So I'll see you guys next time.